cosplay friends welcome back to my youtube channel today i'm going to show you what's inside my prop boxes i have two prop boxes uh right now actually technically three but you'll see that one in a little bit before we get started please make sure you hit like and subscribe maybe you haven't been watching my videos and you just forgot to hit that subscribe button Welcome to the community. I also have YouTube memberships, which you can check out at the link in the description. But other than that, let's get into the prop box stuff. So I have two prop boxes here. Um, one of them is a Hoya prop box and the other one is a philodendron prop box. They're decently big, as you can kind of see. I keep them in front of my south facing window. And uh, let's take a look. Let's do the Hoya one first. I'm actually really excited to show you what's in here because I looked the other day and I was like, whoa, We'll start with the one that I'm really excited to show you, which is my little Hoya Serpents propagation. Check that out. I only got this about two weeks ago. Can you believe that? And it did not have this big long runner. And I think he is throwing hands. You can see in that one little spot right there, he is throwing some little baby serpent's hands. And uh, at the very tip as well, but you're not gonna be able to see the one all the way up at the top, but look at him. Just like this teeny itty bitty tiny little piece. I was so nervous. I was like, wow, I really hope that I don't just absolutely obliterate this because serpents have been on my list for a while and I have never owned one. So he's growing so fast. He's already bigger than when he was uh, the other day when I took a look at him. So yeah, here he is. Just living his absolute best life. Here's his little root system. Just killing it. I literally just lay him on top of the perlite and that's it. <laughs> Next, I have this Hoya, I think Rosita. This is my Hoya Sipitangensis propagation. And as you can tell, it is seriously taking off. Like, look at those heckin' roots. Here's the uh, underneath. Check that out. And this has just been like from, I think, three weeks. Yeah, I got this one the same time as I got the serpent, so been about three weeks and he is just totally crushing it. How sick is that? This one is super exciting and it's already grown more than when I checked on it two nights ago. This is my Hoya Enduensis and you'll see there's a little growth. For Brooklyn, my BFF sent this to me months ago. I probably had this plant for like five or six months and it just has done nothing and it's also done horribly. So I actually unpotted it from what it was potted in. Finally growing. Look at those little baby hands it's throwing, bro. Oh my gosh. For this guy, because I absolutely love this little Hoya and oh my gosh, it's so, t it's so teeny, teeny, tiny, but. He really just out here doing the most. <laughs> Next, we have a plant that I wasn't sure was gonna make it. This is my Hoya Australis Lisa. This was sent to me by one of my subscribers and it was just two leaves. It had two more leaves that were super beautiful, but they both died, which super sucked. <laughs> but now we have this guy and he's got tons of roots coming out from everywhere. And these are two of the baby leaves that were on my plant when I got it. And now they're huge and check it out. I'm back, uh, outfit change, shirt into a tennis skirt. And let's get right back into the video. <laughs> the next really cool propagation I have to show you is this Beacensis, I think. Beacensis, Beacensis. This one though, does grow very slowly and root slowly. It's the only one that she's given me that I haven't been able to uh, pot up yet, but it does have some pretty funky looking roots going on. So it's definitely growing. It's definitely doing its job, but he do be taking his time. Then we have this little Hoya Memoria cutting that I got and he is doing so good. I'm so excited. The top part looks like it did die off, but that is okay because the rest of the plant is doing phenomenal. It's doing super good. This plant also has like super thick leaves, which is awesome for me because I love plants with super thick leaves. Then right here, we have a wild propagation. This is my Hoya Croniana that I bought from my friend Heather Hoyas. And it's huge, right? Like the leaves are bigger than my thumbnail even really. And the, it is just huge. Usually I feel like Hoya Croniana are super duper small, but this is like the biggest one I've ever seen. I'm also like dripping perlite all over myself. Look at that. How fun is that? I'm so excited for it. Very pumped about that one. Then I have this kind of little myriad of Hoya Matilde. This one was given to me as a super small cutting 
has actually grown, uh, I think two new leaves. I think those two new leaves right there are brand new, which is super exciting. It's also a splashy uh, Matilde, so I hope it just get, keeps getting splashier and splashier and splashier as time goes on. Oh, I love it. Look at how big it's gotten. It's gotten so big. I hope he keeps getting bigger. I also have another Matilde, which is currently rooting, separate plant from a different person. And that rooting is going really, really good as well. Next, I have this Hoya that has absolutely just taken off and I have no idea what it's called. I think Heather gave it to me, but it's this. And I don't know what it is. <laughs> I have no idea what it is, but look at the roots. I could pot this up if I wanted to, bro. Oh, it looks so good. TBH, look at that, oh my gosh. Next, I have a little Hoya Rosita, and I actually have two of these. The other one is right here, and my BFF Brooke sent it to me, so that's this one. This one's already rooted, though. Growing in and cup, living its best life, and this one is just growing in now, and I got it to put out a leaf. See that little leaf right on the top right there? I did that. <laughs> Look at that, though. How exciting. Uh, I love Hoya. There is a reason I have more Hoya than any other genus of plant in my entire collection, okay? Look at the little Rosita. Rosita honestly is like a tiny little Wayeti eye, but also like a Carnosa. It's just fun. And this one's rooting in really nicely and eventually I'll pop them up together. Next I have this little Hoya Crinkle 8. He's cute. He's not doing a whole lot except for on the very bottom right there. But other than that, he's doing really good. <laughs> I can't wait for him to grow in. I do have an actual plant of a Crinkle 8 right now though, so... If he doesn't make it, I won't be that sad because I have a whole plant, but I really hope he makes it because he's already put out little roots on the bottom and I want to see him live in his best life and I want to pot him up in my other one if I can. Next, I have this absolutely atrocious Hoya Obavada Splash. Yes, I know that I have like a million of these. Okay, you don't need to tell me again, but look at this. Look at him. Oh my gosh. And these are new. These are in my care. And look at the roots. Wow. I'm excited. I'm excited. He's doing good. I am proud. Very exciting. Then I threw this in here just because I was curious to see what would happen. This is a little string of turtles propagation that I took. And look, he's growing new leaves. He's a little atoliated because this box doesn't get the best light. But look, he grew like roots and everything. I literally just threw this in that box to see what happened. I fully expected it to rot, but it didn't. And it's even like rooting off of the stem. Like look at those little baby roots coming off. This just in, you can root string of turtles in perlite. Okay, so that is actually it for this top prop box. So now let's look into the next one. So this next one is a little bit more simple, I guess. It is a lot of philodendron. I'm currently growing these for my friend who has a shop in town. And I'm just gonna show you some of the cuttings I have going on in here. I basically, I grow all of these cuttings in like wet perlite. And I'm always making sure that it's like wet and not just moist. And if your cuttings don't take the first time, just leave them in there a little bit longer and eventually they will take. Some of these have been in here for like four months and they're just now finally sprouting. So it doesn't make them any less cool or viable. It just means that, hey, they just took a little bit longer to come out and that's okay. Let me show you one of the cutest ones first. This is a Mykins. This is a baby Mykins seedling. I'm not sure because it's not coming from a seed, um, but it's not mature. This is like a little juvenile Mykins. The leaves are like narrower and greener instead of darker. I personally prefer them at this stage. And look at his roots. Look at those rooty guys. Yeah, they're, go they're doing great. This one's actually also getting busy putting out another leaf right now, which is exciting. And they're so perfectly velvet. Like there's no scratches on the leaves. I just love it when they look like this. Here's this weird propagation that I have. I think it's a teeny tiny piece of a node of a Standaliana elbow. And you're probably not even gonna be able to like see what it is, but like, look at it. The only thing I can think, because it is speckled with white variegation and it is putting out a new teeny tiny leaf, is that it is like some type of uh, Standaliana elbow monstera. But look at how absolutely small that is. <laughs> Weird, huh? Yeah, anyways, he lives in there. In here as well, I have Campos for Toanum who is doing good. This was a top cutting that I put in here and he's also putting out a new leaf as we speak. 
as we speaketh, but not a new leaf at the very top right there. And look at the fun little roots we have going on. So exciting, right? I think it's exciting. Right here in the front, we actually have two more campos. They're gonna be these guys right there. And they're doing really good as well. The roots on these almost look like worms, which is kind of funky, but I think it's cute. And look at him. You would never even be able to know that that's not a Mikens if you didn't know what to look for. And he's putting out a little shoot. Here's a Mikens that's just a little bit more mature at the moment. You can see we have the dark leaf and then this is a brand new leaf that just came in. A little bit more pillowy and velvety compared to the baby and a much more substantial root system actually. This is one I think you'd actually be comfortable to pop up into a little plug, but check that out. I love doing micans because they're so easy and they just go, like they want to grow for you. I don't know, I like it, I think it's cute and I can't wait for it to keep growing. I just, hold on, like one more time. Look at that color. Like, it just looks like that looks so beautiful. And I wanted to show you what a teeny tiny Mikan's seedling looks like. <laughs> How cute is that? Super duper little, super small. Root system is small as well, but like, look. How is that not so precious? Little Mikan's. So this Pop Rocks is almost completely Mikan's and then a couple other philodendron and that one Monstera, baby Monstera that I showed you. So that's actually it for that Pop Box as well. The only other Pop Box that I have is the one that I literally just put together in the video that you just saw. And you already know all the plants that are in here, but I'll take out some honorable mentions. So number one is my little Syngonium Alba Podophyllum. And this is a moss prop terrarium. Before being in that bowl, it was, or in that terrarium, it was actually in a bowl, like a metal salad bowl that I had. Uh, and these are my little leaves that came out on it. How cute. And they're doing really well, I think. I'm like nervous to take anything out. <laughs> I don't want to break off any new leaves that might be emerging. These new leaves that are coming in on this Pubicalyx Splash, which the Splash, I don't think this one looks super splashy, but um, this one likes to do every other one. So we got super duper splashy, not splashy, super duper splashy, not splashy. So I'm hoping that this other little one that's coming in right now, that teeny tiny baby, will be super splashy as well. And then lastly, this is the pubicalyx that Miranda gave me. So was the last one, but this one's so on a, like so notable because this was one of the leaves that she gave me and it is so beautiful and so cute. And um, it actually had another one, but it actually broke off in the rooting process and it's putting out a very splashy new leaf. I'm excited. When these pubicalyx just remind me of like the Wilbur Graves, which I think is why I like them so much. And they're rooting. They're slow rooting, but they are rooting. So I'm really excited for this one's future. I'm excited that it's already putting out a new leaf and I hope that we see many more in the future. So prop boxes are really interesting because you have to be careful with them. You have to make sure that they're not too humid, that they're not too moist. You want them to be like the perfect amount of humid and moist and not like too wet, not too dry. You don't want it to be too windy. Some people put like fans, they have these big old prop boxes and they'll put little computer disc fans in them. And then those ones are really cool too. Me personally, I just prefer this little Tupperware and it does really, really good. It cost me $3 at Fred Meyer on clearance. I threw a bunch of perlite in there, got it super wet. I probably water it once every week. The one that I have open, my Hoya prop box, I prop that one open all the time. And that one I probably water once every five to six days. But don't just like do what I do. You should pick up the prop box, feel it. Does it feel wet? Does it feel soft? When you poke the perlite, does it feel wet? Does it feel dry? You should always have it be pretty darn wet. And philodendron, like the prop box closed in Monstera from what I can tell, and some Hoyas, but most Hoyas really like to really be able to breathe. So if you do a closed prop box with Hoya, um, there's a, a huge chance that you could just like lose your Hoya. So thank you so much for watching this video. And thank you so much for the extra channel support to the Planted Carly Flower, Botanicas, Terra Wolf Gang, All the Green Places, and Crazy Chick Vintage. Thank you guys so much for the extra channel support. And if any of you guys want to do any extra channel support, please make sure you check out the membership option, the little join button down in the description. You can join our Discord and our wonderful little plant community. Also, I have a couple different sponsorships. If you want to support me via fertilizer, you can use code PLANTME underscore 25. If you've been waiting and waiting and waiting to try out a new fertilizer, try out liquider make sure to use code plan me underscore 25 it will save you 25% off
off of your purchase and it will help my channel out a lot. Also, if you like my glasses, if you think that they're cute, you guys are always asking me where I get my glasses. I do get my glasses from Zymph Optical. You can use code Ashley, super sweet and simple, so easy, for 50% off frames and 20% off lenses. It also helps my channel out significantly with every time that you use my code. Also, you can hit like and subscribe and tweet me at Playing Me Ashley. Helping my parents move, so you're gonna see some Portland content as well, and you're gonna see some Arizona content because that is where my parents are moving to and I'm going to be helping them move for about three weeks. Thank you again for watching this video. Thank you for staying through the extra long credits. You are definitely a real one if you watched all the way through here. I see you, I'm smiling at you in my head. If you're, if you're looking away doing chores, I see you, thank you so much. And you guys, I will see you in the next houseplant section. I'm gonna see you in a lot of houseplant sections. Okay, <laughs> goodbye.